afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tracy Park, chair of our city's trade travel and tourism committee. Welcome to our regularly scheduled meeting. Mr. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Council Member Park. Yes. Present. McCosker. Here. Soto Martinez. Present. Three members and a quorum, Madam Chair. All right, thank you, Mr. Clerk. So before we begin public comment, I understand there are technical corrections to read into the record for items four and six, is that right? That is correct, Madam Chair. You could do that, please. Okay, for item four, uh, council file number 24-0422, um, the department report does include a fiscal impact statement and to date there's no, com I'm sorry, there is a fiscal impact statement attached to the department report and to date there's no community impact statement. Um, for item six, uh, council file 240429, the fiscal impact statement for the department report has a typographical error. Um, it is a 10 year renewal for the business improvement district. All right, thank you, Mr. Clark. So that will bring us to public comment. Members of the public wishing to give public comment can sign up at the kiosk in the back of the room. You will be given one minute for general public comment and up to two minutes for multiple items. So we will go ahead and get started. I'm gonna call a couple of names. Uh, if you could just walk up uh, to the podium. Ali Altaha, Armando, Armando Munoz, and Florinda Garcia. Hi, and if you could just tell me what items you'd like to be heard on in your name, please. My name is Ali Altaha, and I'm here to uh, make a comment on item number three for Lawa. Okay, you have one minute, go ahead. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, uh, committee members. I. I'm here to um, express my support for the item and for the way that Lawa have conducted business uh, in their recent procurement. And what I'd like to ask you as uh, members of this committee is to really look at the process that Lawa have engaged in, in terms of the procurement, in terms of the policies that they put forward and put it forward as a way of doing business with the city of LA and its various uh, departments. Um, it was a great process, and um, it would be great to have it uh, replicated with other departments within the city. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Hi. Can you just tell me your name and let me know which items you'd like to be heard on? Hi. Uh, nice to meet you. My name is Armando Munoz, and I'm just doing a public comment. Okay. You have okay. one minute. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've been working at LAX for the past uh, 14 years. I'm a member from SEIU Local USWW. I'm with my brothers and sisters from Unite Here. Uh, me and my colleagues are here and have been coming for about a year already. Uh, we are here to urge you not to only stand with us, but to do everything as you can ensure to increase the living wage orders, to pass the living wage orders, and push forward as soon as possible. As we all know, tourism is booming in Los Angeles, and we keep growing as we prepare to host the global events like the 2026 World Cup and the 2028 Olympics. Unfortunately, the people who make tourism possible, LA's airport and hotel workers, are struggling. We do not earn enough to pay rent during our unprecedented housing crisis, and healthcare costs are spiraling faster than healthcare coverage can keep up. Many of us are struggling to survive on the city's current living wage. Tourist workers often face food and housing insecurity, and many of us are forced to work two jobs. I ask council members on this committee that we do everything we can to make sure that the policy moves forward. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Florinda Garcia, you're up next. I'm gonna call a couple of other names. Heather Perry, Jovan Houston. Ms. Garcia, I think you're up. If you could just let me know what items you'd like to be heard on. Ms. Garcia, going once, going twice. Okay, I'll come back to Ms. Garcia. If, she's, if she is here and is going to come, I'll come back to her. Ms. Perry? Hi, good morning. Hi. We're not on morning at all. We're on afternoon. <laughs> Can you just tell me which item you'd like to be heard on? I can, number two. All right, you've got one minute. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, thank you for taking the time. My name is Heather Perry, and I'm here speaking in support of item number two. Clatch Coffee is a woman-majority-owned family business that has been in SoCal area for 31 years, and we are proud to partner with local minority company, Cruise, a sublease of areas LAX. What my parents started out of a love for coffee and conversation 31 years ago has grown into eight retail locations, a roastery and training lab, and e-commerce business. 
We strive for excellence in everything we do, and that is reflected in the attention we bring to the LA area through our numerous awards, including Best Coffee House, Best Espresso in the World, Brewing and Barista Championships, just to name a few. We purchase our coffee through sustainable methods that ensure we'll be providing the best coffee from around the world for years to come. We employ over 120 people and work with many local vendors, including Rock and Wagner Bakery. Licensing our brand to LAX with Cruise has allowed us to expand to new LA areas, create more jobs, and bring enjoyment to even more people's day through an amazing coffee experience. Being a part of LAX has allowed us to show the traveling public how LA has some of the best culinary offerings in the nation. Thank you. Ms. Perry Jovan Houston. I'm going to call a couple of names to come get in line. Laura Esquivel, Lisandro Perza. Ms. Houston, what would you like to be heard on? A uh, general public comment. All right, you've got one minute. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Javon Houston. I'm an airport worker at LAX for seven years. Healthcare is really important to me. I was diagnosed with COPD. I struggle to pay for cost of healthcare. My medicine, my son's medicine, it's very important. It should not take a year for this study to come back to tell you how, how hard it is for airport workers. You can walk around LAX and talk to the workers yourself for 20 minutes and find out. This is enough is enough. We waited too long. We're struggling. In a minute, we are gonna be out, outside here, City Hall, in our tents, because a lot of us are homeless, or will be homeless very soon. The economy in LA is, LA, LA sorry, is booming. Everybody's getting raises, except for airport workers and healthcare workers and tourism workers here today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Houston. Laura Esquivel. Hi there. What would you like to be heard on this afternoon? Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Laura Esquivel. Hold on one sec. Good afternoon. My name is Laura Esquivel. Thanks. Can we confirm what you'd like to be heard on, please? ¿Y de qué puntos le gustaría hablar? Es un, es un comentario general. General comment. Thanks. One minute. Go ahead. Un minuto. Adelante. He trabajado en LAX por 22 años. Insto a este comité a poner la política del, del sueldo digno y seguro médico. I've worked in LAX for 22 years and I've joined this coalition or this organization uh, because of the need for uh, uh, medical insurance as well as uh, proper pay. El seguro médico tendría que ser accesible y lo propongo en la agenda lo más pronto posible para que los empleos en LAX sean trabajos justos. As far as medical insurance, it needs to be affordable as soon as possible so that workers at LAX are able to access it. Esta política me ayudaría a mí y a mi familia, ya que el seguro de salud es demasiado caro. And this sort of policy would help me and my family as it is already difficult to be able to access food and be able to uh, take care of our basic needs. Lo cual me pone a mí y a mi familia en un riesgo económico. And this would put, uh, not having the medical insurance would put both me and my family at a financial risk. Estamos en una emergencia médica de posible bancarrota para mi familia y para muchas personas de las cuales estamos aquí. Having some sort of medical emergency could run the risk of me going bankrupt or having some sort of uh, extreme financial disposition as well as many of my colleagues that are joining me here today. Yo insto a este comité a aprobar el sueldo digno para nosotros, para la gente trabajadora que lo merece y lo necesitamos. No queremos parar en la calle. So we're part of this organization here to ask for a proper wage as well as this type of benefit so that all of us are able to uh, take care of our basic needs and we don't have to end up on the streets. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna call a few more names. Uh, Lissandro Perza, Maria Romero, Maria Vasquez. Lissandra Perzo is next. Hi, what would you like to be Hi. heard on today? I'm here to give a general public comment. All right, you Good have afternoon. one minute. Go ahead. My name is Lissandra Perza, and I work for Parodies at, at LAX since 2022, and I'm a, proud member, I'm a proud member of Unite Here Local 11. I'm a resident and voter of District 15. I'm a cashier at a company, uh, my company, and I make 1974s per hour. The policy to raise the wage for tourism workers was introduced almost a year ago. Since then, the cost of rent, 
food and gas has skyrocketed. Over the last six months, my monthly budget no longer covers my basic needs. With my autoimmune disease, I've had to get help from friends, family, and to be able to afford enough food to eat. The policy is critical to solve this crisis. We're calling on you to do everything in your power to make sure this policy is in the next meeting so it can be brought back to council without further delay. We hope that we can count on your full support. Thank you. All right, thank you. Maria Romero, hi. What would you like to be heard on today? Hello, um, General? General? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be able to tip that okay. down for you a little bit. There you go. You've got one minute. Go thank ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, uh, council members. Thank you for taking me, taking the time to listen to us. My name is Maria Romero. And I have worked at LAX uh, for 17 years, and I am a proud member of SEIU. I am here because raising the wage for airport workers is extremely important to me and my family. I am a I am a single parent, a parent of a seven-year-old. I know how hard it is to make ends meet. I have lived in Los Angeles all my life, as well as my whole family. Los Angeles has always been home for me, and it's crazy that I am being pushed out because everything is expensive, and I, have I can barely afford to live here. As an airport worker who has worked at LAX for 17 years, I take my work seriously, and I like my what I do at, at the airport. But how is any worker supposed to survive, make ends meet with those wages? As size, um, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Um, Math, I'm gonna call a few more names, Matthew Hom. Michael Washington and Nayeli Gomez. Maria Vasquez, what would you like to be heard on today? General Public. Okay, you have one minute, go ahead. Hello, my name is Maria and I'm a SEU US WWE member. I have lived in the city of Los Angeles and as all my life, but the cost of living has rise, but I no longer can afford to live here. Raising the wage will change my life and the lives of my coworkers and people who are struggling every day. Working paycheck to paycheck, barely making and meets, this issue is so very important to all airports and hotel workers who continue to make the economic run. It's time to raise the wage. Now, all the airports and hotel workers because workers deserve to have decent livable wage in LA. Thank you. Thank you. Matthew Hom. Mr. Hom, what would you like to be heard on today? General public comment, please. You've got one minute, go ahead. Good afternoon, my name is Matthew and I'm the Los Angeles organizer at Clergy and Laity United for Economic Justice, or CLU. We bring together clergy and lay leaders and congregations of all faiths with the marginalized, the unheard, and the least protected low-wage workers in the cause of a just and equitable LA. We're here in solidarity with, with hospitality and tourism workers for the raising of the wage for tourism workers and ensuring that they have access to quality family health care in the city of Los Angeles. This policy was introduced over one year ago, and these workers cannot wait. Tourism workers in the city of Los Angeles deserve to be healthy and housed. We want to congratulate all three of the city council members here for voting just two weeks ago to raise the wage for bus drivers. You have really set the precedent for making Los Angeles a livable city, and we ask you to, in turn, um, pass this policy and actually to schedule it in your next committee meeting on May 7th, which will benefit not only tourism workers, but all of our communities. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Hom. Mr. Washington, what would you like to be heard on today? Item number two. All right, you have one minute, go ahead. All right. Good afternoon, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Michael Washington, speaking in support of agenda number two. A little bit about me, I'm fortunate to be the Western Regional Director of the Airport Minority Advisory Council, which includes Nevada, Arizona, Hawaii, and California. I'm co-founder and president of Palazzo Concessions, which is partnership with HMS Host in Hudson. I serve as a board member of the Los Angeles Convention and Tourism Board, uh, and passing this resolution will provide uninterrupted award-winning service to the guests coming to Los Angeles for the upcoming World Cup, NBA All-Star, Super Bowl, and the Olympics. So imagine our guests walking through our airport with signage that reads, pardon my dust. 
<laughs> with very few offerings for food and beverage and retail because of construction. This is not a great way to welcome our guests from across the world. We will not leave a great impression. Passing this resolution will stabilize existing local small business, allow us to continue to support our community and local brands. Again, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Naomi, Naomi Gomez, you're up next. I'm gonna call a few more names. Nick Cruz, Simeon Stewart, and Terrence Lowe. Ms. Gomez, what would you like to be heard on? I'm here for general public comment. All right, you have one minute, go ahead. My name is Nayeli Gomez. I've worked for um, Courtyard for about 10 years and I am a proud member of Unite Local here, uh, Local 11. I joined the workers about three weeks ago, uh, about 34 hotels across Southern California. We ratified our new contract with our employers. After months of striking, we have one historic wage increases. For example, by July 1st of 2027, room attendance at my hotel will be increasing $35 an hour. I'm sharing this with you because our victory shows that hotel workers and other employers in the tourism industry have no excuse. We have shown that when it comes down to it, they can afford to pay their workers a living wage. Through our hard work and sacrifice, we have paid the Way and showed what is possible. Now it's your turn. We have the opportunity to raise the floor and make sure that all tourism workers from the hotels to LAX earn a living, uh, living wage. My coworkers and I will stand alongside with them until we win. We need an Olympic wage now. We have called the hotel's industry's bluff. They can afford to raise the wage. We implore you to put us on the agenda for May 7th. Thank you. Ms. Gomez. Mr. Cruz. Nick Cruz, what would you like to be heard on today? Uh, item number two. All right, you have one minute, go ahead. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Chair Park, distinguished council members. Uh, my name is Nick Cruz, I'm the CEO of Cruz Hospitality, second generation airport concessionaire. We've been operating in LAX for over 10 years. Uh, I'm here to uh, uh, support approving the extension for the operations. Not only does this extension allow for continued uninterrupted employment of all of our guests, but further allows for us to extend our partnership with our local brand partners, one of which you heard from today. Uh, we look forward to further investing in our locations as well, so we can provide an LA exceptional experience for the upcoming World Cup, Olympics, and Super Bowl. We really appreciate your support in extending these locations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Simeon Stewart, come on up. What would you like to be heard on today? Item number two, please. All right, you have one minute, go ahead. Thank you, my name's Simeon Stewart, I'm CEO of Palazzo Concessions. As a local uh, entrepreneur who happens to be a native Los Angelino, I'm very proud of my experience with the airport, been there since 2005. And I just wanted to thank you for considering this particular motion. We are excited about continuing our partnership, not only with our primes, but with our labor, uh, we're very concerned about them continuing their employment. And we also want to just provide a beautiful guest experience for anyone who comes to our airport. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Terrence Lowe, what would you like to be heard on today? I would like to be heard on general public comment. You have one minute, go ahead. My name is Minister Terrence Lowe and I work at Flying Food Group and I'm a proud member of Unite Here Local 11. I'm a class A driver for Flying Food Group, not a class B, not a class C, but a class A. And I don't make a living wage. If you go on the school grading system, I'm at the top, but yet I don't make a living wage. The policy to raise the wage for tourism workers was introduced almost a year ago. Since then, my rent has gone up I'm the head of a family of five, yet I don't make a living wage. Our rent is over 2,000 a month and it's going up. On my over, rent is over 2,000 a month and half of my monthly income. As rent go increases, my living wages decreases. Expenses go up every day and will continue to go up just as my rent. The policy is critical to solving this crisis. My coworkers went on strike for 26 days because of the wages. We're doing everything we can to improve our workplace. We call on you to put this item on your next meeting. 
We hope that we Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Appreciate it. Your time is up. I really appreciate it. All right. I want to give Florinda Garcia another chance. Ms. Garcia, are you here? Okay. Is there anybody else that wishes to give public comment? There's a lot of you here. If you have more you'd like to say, we're all ears. Okay, I'm gonna close public comment. Going once, going twice. All right, we're closing public comment. Thank you all for being here today. Um, unless there is an objection from my colleagues, I would like to move items three, four as amended, five, six as amended, seven and eight on consent. Any issues? Do you no? want to move nine on consent? We can do that if you'd like. I think that was. Would you like to make some comments on nine? Sure, I will. Okay, let's yes. talk about nine. Let's talk about nine. So uh, seeing no objections to that, Mr. Clerk, if you would please call the roll. Council Member Park? Yes. McCosker? Yes. Soto Martinez? Yes. Three ayes and these items are approved as stated by the chair. So with that, we will go ahead and move to um, item nine first. And Mr. Clerk, if you would read the item, please. Item nine is council file 24-0411. It's a motion, McCosker Gregorian, relative to requesting the Port of Los Angeles uh, to report with analysis of the conditions and circumstances that uh, led to the collapse of Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge and in consultation with the Port of Long Beach to report on the existing coordinated emergency planning responses, response plans for similar events in the San Pedro Bay complex. So thank you for that. And, and we could have moved this on consent. I don't think there's any disagreement amongst us about how important this is, but um, I wanted to hear it because I wanted to thank and acknowledge you for bringing this, um, this motion. And you know, as someone who spent years living in Baltimore, this was an iconic landmark and critical piece of infrastructure and seeing what happened there in Baltimore has been absolutely heartbreaking and a very important reminder that protection of our critical infrastructure is essential. So again, I wanna thank you in your leadership in bringing this and Mr. McCosker with that, I will turn the floor over to you. Thank you very much. Um, I did not know about your, your background with that bridge, um, but we, we thought a lot of community members thought it very important when we saw the tragic news, not only the loss of life, but um, less importantly, but also important, the shutdown of the harbor yes. uh, because of the loss of the key bridge. Um, we have the Vincent Thomas Bridge in the uh, San Pedro Bay. Uh, it is a lower profile bridge because of its age. It's about 60 years old. Uh, it is going through some serious renovations in the coming years to redeck the bridge. Um, I'm not suggesting that there's going to be renovations to the, uh, to the height or to the stanchions, but we wanted to get an analysis of whether or not there are risks with either the engineering of the bridge itself uh, which looks from a distance like it, like the like the stanchions are on land, but they're not actually. They're they're actually in the water, and it's um, but it's not in the open water. It's in the water that is uh, built up from the from the um, docks. Uh, so it's you know it's person-made docks, and then the stanchions go through the docks. Um, the other thing, and we also want to do an analysis, have an analysis of what are the 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 procedures and the protocols in and around the port that might contribute to a disaster, but might also prevent a disaster. I think a lot of folks who live in and around the port of LA and Long Beach saw the news last month and thought, where are the tugs? <laughs> you know, we have, we have tugboats that take, take all of the large ships in and out of our port, and that was not the case, and I'm not casting any aspersions or making any judgment about what the analysis is gonna be, but we wanna know everything about what are the, what are the, what's the engineering on the bridge and what are the procedures that can contribute to, but more importantly, can prevent um, such a disaster. And so we are looking forward to this coming back. I appreciate very much that the port has been, you know, very open to it. And uh, we also are looking to see what are the existing protocols and are there any, is there any need to uh, uh, increase our uh, uh, inter-agency inter uh, emergency responses, should something like this happen. So thank you very much for giving me a chance to speak on this. I appreciate the I vote. 
No, absolutely, and I appreciate the proactive leadership in ensuring that our workers and our port and our critical infrastructure assets are safe and that we are thinking about these. Uh, Council Member Soto Martinez, anything you would like to add? No, okay, well, let's go ahead and uh, take a vote then. Mr. Clerk, if you would, call the roll. Council Member Park? Yes. McCosker? Yes. Uh, Soto Martinez? Yes. Three ayes and this item's approved, motion's approved. All right, fantastic. So with that, let's go to item two. Mr. Clerk, if you would please read item two. Item two, council file 24-0412 is a board of airport commissioners report relative to authorizing amendments to certain 14 in-terminal concession agreements with Arias USA LAX LLC, Cruise Hospitality LLC, DN Dakota JME, Host International Incorporated, and Hudson Group to extend their terms to June 30th, 2029, covering concessions in terminals four, five, seven, and eight at Los Angeles International Airport, and categorical, categorical exemption from the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, pursuant to Article 3, Class 1, 18C of the City of Los Angeles CEQA guidelines. All right, thank you so much. And I know we have reps from uh, LAWA here, and I just came from LAX earlier today, and it just continues to be remarkable watching all of the work underway to get us ready for some very big events. Um, I personally don't have any questions, but I really want to thank Mayor Bass and the entire LAWA team for working with our concessionaires and our labor partners to move this matter forward today. As we prepare to welcome major international events to our city, including the World Cup in 2026, which is gonna be here before you know it, and the Olympic and Paralympic, uh, Paralympic Games in 2028, I, I think it is imperative that we prioritize consistency and stability amongst our concessionaires at the airport while ensuring that our workers in the tourism economy have good jobs and continue to earn good wages. So I know a lot of work has gone into the contract efforts to secure both of those goals. So I just wanted to say that and commend you all for the hard work that went into getting us here. Uh, Council Member McCosker, any questions or comments? Uh, maybe just a couple of questions uh, following the uh, comment. Uh, first of all, well said, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you. Um, I. I really appreciate the analysis that it is important for us uh, to present ourselves well to the world as the world comes and visits uh, and making the way down to the port to make sure they're spending money in my district. <laughs> um, and I appreciate, I appreciate the fact that this is probably not a time that we would want to um, go out to an RFP. I mean, that's just my, I mean, I, I'm sure it's, it's in your report and that's my analysis as well. I think it's, incredibly important for us to uh, make sure that we hang on to our good staff, but also uh, that our employees are well paid. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, the efforts that the airport has gone through and as part of the city family to make sure we have labor peace and to make sure that we have um, you know, good paying jobs at the airport in, independent of what we just heard about in public comment? Denise Sample, I am a Director of Terminal Leasing and Concessions for Los Angeles World Airports. We require all of our concessionaires to have as part of their agreement, a labor peace agreement. That They have a CBA as well, but labor peace is very important to us. And one of the reasons that we didn't move this forward sooner is because they were still negotiating. Um, we've decided to move it forward even though some are still pending because we hope that they will continue to work together and we can get this moving forward so that we can move towards the Olympics. Yeah, probably more than a hope even because we have a labor peace agreement. And in fact, what, we, what we're doing is driving these parties together and making sure that we have a continuation of service so there's no lockout, there's no strikes, there's also you know, good, um, you know, good faith yeah. negotiations. And I understand that some of the contracts are in fact resolved or close to being resolved. Correct. At least three of them have been resolved. We have a few outstanding. Um, having you guys approve this and move it to council and have council approve it, we cannot execute them until their labor peace agreements are in place. So that is a motivation for them to continue to negotiate. From what we hear, things are going well. And the timeline pinch is such that my folks, lay people like me would say from outside of the you know, lay from being outside of the airport would look at it and say, well, you have two years left on a contract, but it actually 
takes a long time for you to do an RFP, to go through a thoughtful selection, and that might be an exercise that we don't even think would be fruitful in any case. Correct. So we're balancing goods on all sides. Yes. The good of protecting our labor force, hanging on to our, our workers, the good of making sure that we have you know, fine, um, uh, you know, fine offerings mm -hmm. for our customers. Correct. Thanks for your hard work on this. Thank you. Councilmember Soto Martinez. Yes, thank you so much, Madam Chair. Uh, I just want to uh, very echo some of the words that were said uh, by both of my colleagues. Just want to thank everyone who worked on this uh, to get us to a point where I feel comfortable supporting this today. Uh, I know it's not easy. Uh, I, I was an organizer at the airport for two years. Uh, I'm very familiar with Westfield having some terminals and four, five, seven, and eight. Um, and the different uh, DBs and minority-owned businesses, and how you have to deal with the large, the big fish, and it's a very complicated ecosystem. But I think through dialogue, conversation, understanding what the workers need, what the business needs, what the tourism needs, what the city needs, is important. And so, so I want to thank everyone who worked on this today, uh, and I'll be supporting it. Thank you. All right, fantastic. All right, I don't think there are any other questions then, so. Um, I would move that we approve item number two. Mr. Clark, if you would, please. Council Member Park? Yes. McCosker? Yes. Soto Martinez? Yes. Three eyes, and this item's approved, Madam Chair. Awesome, thank you. So that brings us back to item number one. Mr. Clerk, if you would, please read the item. Item one is a verbal discussion only. It's an economic and workforce development department update relative to the draft program year 2024-2025 annual plan. Thank you, Gerardo. Always lovely to see you. If um, everyone could just introduce yourselves and we are very excited for this update. Thank you, council members. Uh, thank you, council members. Always a pleasure uh, being in this committee. Um, so I am uh, Gerardo Rubalcaba. I am the Assistant General Manager for Workforce Development. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Council Members. Donnie Brooks. I'm the Division Chief, Workforce Development Division at the Economic and Workforce Development Department. Nice to see you. Thank you. Well, Council. Oh, I'm sorry. Elizabeth <laughs> Macias with our Strategic Planning Unit. Nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Well, Council Members, so we're excited today to, to present our first draft of our program year 24-25 annual plan. Um, just for background, the annual plan is a policy and budget document that the department prepares every year uh, for our workforce development programs. Um, so the the plan includes the the vision for the workforce develop or the joint vision of the workforce development system between city council, the workforce development board, and the mayor's office. Um, it includes a number of strategies, um, workforce development policies, and budget for the program year. The annual plan is an equity focused document. It really is focused on creating good jobs and expanding economic opportunity for individuals that have been left out um, you know, within the city. The annual plan has been, over the last five years, built on eight strategic initiatives. Again, each focused on different program areas. I, I won't read, I know this is a very lengthy slide, uh, but really focus on, again, serving those individuals with the highest barriers to employment. We focus on homeless individuals, uh, opportunity youth, uh, youth that are in 16 to 24 year olds that are disconnected from education and employment, reentry populations, gender equity, um, and recently uh, focused on older workers, uh, workers 55 and older that are out of the, um, or seeking employment. Um, over the last nine months, um, as we've uh, shared with this committee, we really have been focused on rethinking our workforce development system. You know, the, the, the local labor economy has gone through a number of structural changes um, since the pandemic. We know, again, uh, older workers have been impacted, opportunity youth. Um, the, the number of youth disconnected from education and employment has increased over, you know, close to 40% uh, since the pandemic. Um, so over the nine, over the last nine months, we've been engaged in a number of strategic planning processes that are really focused on trying to update and, and improve our workforce development system. So this, I'm sorry if you can go back. Uh, 
So this includes uh, convening a, a, a regional partners around updating our what we call our LEP3 strategic plan. This is a, a regional collaborative focus on improving education and employment outcomes for disconnected youth. We have been working with a consultant to develop a strategic plan for older workers. We have, it's not included in this slide, but we have engaged both labor um, and labor partners, ed education partners, and workforce development partners around developing a plan for infrastructure. We know the region is scheduled to get, you know, billions of dollars in, in infrastructure do uh, through the the bipartisan infrastructure bill, and we are focused on really developing a, what we are calling the LA Win, uh, LA Workforce Infrastructure Network, um, to really align all of the resources to help prepare a talent pipeline uh, and prepare individuals for the different employment opportunities through, that will be made available through infrastructure. Um, so all of that will also be rolled up into our annual plan. Um, the, the timing is not working out as we had hoped, so, but we will include as many of those recommendations again in, in, the, in this uh, upcoming annual plan as possible. Uh, just some of the, the new items that will be included in, in the draft plan. Um, the first, really this invoice automation, uh, which has, I think as we've shared with different committees, the, the department has struggled to, to pay invoices, to help pay contractors, um, you know, again, because of staffing shortages. Um, so we are working to develop a grant management system that will help automate a, a number of our administrative functions. Um, I'll kind of skip through some of these. I mentioned LA Win. Um, you know, we, we are including some funding uh, for the implementation of our older worker strategies. Um, you know, much of our strategic plan we expect will be focused on identifying those key sectors that are growing, not only growing, but that have the opportunity to provide high wage employment opportunities for uh, Angelinos. Uh, so we are including funding for sector intermediaries that help connect employers in those industries. Um, and are really expanding high road training partnerships. Uh, again, partnerships that include employer, employers and training providers in, in those high growth sectors. Um, I know I kind of glanced over, Insight oh, Insight Safe, which is an initiative we launched in the last program year that's focused on connecting our workforce system with the housing services providers to help increase the number of, of homeless individuals that we are connecting to employment opportunities. Um, so that is, again, a high level of, again, the strategies. So in terms of funding, we are projecting um, 11, just under 11 point, $111.5 million in revenue for the new program year. Um, again, I want to emphasize projections because, you know, this early in the process, we still do not have final funding uh, allocations from our uh, major grantors. Um, so we typically start off using last year's funding as, you know, again, to project funding for the new program year. Our hope is that by the time we present the final plan to this committee, we will have final allocations from the state on the WIOA side, as well as um, funding from the county for you know, major uh, grants. Uh, but again, that you know, we're projecting 111.5 million. This includes $48 million in WIOA and, oops, you went too fast. Well, okay, so, um, and the, the rest will, it's a composition of, of, you know, California for all, LA City, County, and, and other anticipated revenues. Um, on the WIOA side, I think, you know, we mentioned um, projecting $48.8 million. This includes both new funding as well as uh, carryover dollars, so savings that we get to carry over from one year to the next. Um, again, we, because we are always uh, conservative in terms of projecting carryover dollars, this plan does does include a, a small decrease of about $3 million. Um, that is, again, all on, on the carryover side, so the savings that get to get carried over. Um, again, in terms of breakdown on how we're allocating WIOA dollars, you know, we are using about 18% for EWDD program oversight. Um, we pay for other city departments. This includes funding, uh, contributions to city attorney's office, personnel, and uh, I believe controller's office. We do pay for the workforce development board, and then again, major programs like our work source, use source centers, and, and other uh, program activities. 
to some of the, the major initiatives included um, $16 million for work to fund 14 work source centers, $10.2 million to fund 14 youth source centers. A number we're excited about is uh, just under $34 million for year round youth employment. So this funds all of the youth work experience programs that we fund across the city. Um, we're projecting $6 million for LA RISE. This is a combination of the city general fund and LA County Measure H funding. Um, I'll, I'll um, skip through some of this. Um, high road training partnerships we mentioned uh, earlier, so about $1.2 million, uh, half a million dollars to fund sector intermediaries. Um, and then uh, 200,000 for the inside safe job connectors and another 300,000 to implement our uh, older workers uh, strategy. In terms of timeline, uh, we, the, the, the annual plan has been posted for public comment. Uh, we typically post it for 30 days. The annual plan was posted on April 12th and we will keep it open for public comment until May 12th. We are doing presentations and in addition to this committee, we will present um, to two different uh, web uh, committees. We'll also have a, a virtual forum and we'll share the, that information with you know, each of your staffs. Uh, but the goal is to compile any public comment and make final adjustments to the annual plan to present to the board in mid-May. And the goal is to present to this committee in early June um, and ultimately have city council and mayor approval by June 30th. Um, so the plan is posted on EWDD's website. I will share information with each of, again, your offices and public comments could be submitted um, through our uh, email that is posted on this presentation. So with that, we'll stop and take any uh, questions. All right, thank you so much for the detailed presentation and the PowerPoint. Um, one of the things that caught my attention is the focus on the older worker strategy. Um, I'm curious what you're seeing that necessitates this as a particular focus. Sure, that's a, a great question. So a couple of things that, that I think really were the impetus for this. Um, you know, one is we're seeing that uh, workers are staying in the labor force much longer than they used to. Um, so, you know, it's not uncommon to see folks stay in the, in, in the labor force until their 70s now, um, which has really, again, grown significantly, right, and, you know, from, from prior generations. Two, I, I believe that close to 20% of the homeless population in LA is now made up of, you know, of older workers. So we know there is a need to, to develop strategies. We know there's a lot of misconceptions about older workers. Um, and you know, so part of this is really about educating, um, educating employers about you know, what older workers bring to the table. The, the other thing that I would mention, you know, one of the things that LADC through their recent, uh, you know, uh, economic forecast talked about was, you know, that the region is scheduled to lose al almost a million um, residents over the next 10 years. Uh, so we know it just, it is going to be more important that we develop strategies to connect older workers to the jobs that, that you know, that employers have. Interesting. Well, I, I, I appreciate the focus on that particular demographic. I have seen older workers impacted it just sort of anecdotally pretty often and, and, and in some parts it's because of how certain industries have been regulated and industries and business that's moving out of California mm -hmm. and also the impacts of the pandemic and other things that are still lingering that have impacted wages especially for more seasoned workers yes. and as certain industries are contracting and we're losing jobs I, I see it just anecdotally a real need for this focus. So I'm really glad that you caught it. Thank you. Um, another quick question. Um, in the year round youth employment program, how many youth per year participate in that? It's a good question. Um, we estimate about 10,000 youth annually. Oh. Um, that, that varies, you know, depending on, on different funding streams. I, I don't think we've done the calculation for the 30, uh, for the, the 33 million, but it should be around that. I'm glad you said it was 10,000. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> um, 
one final question and then I'll uh, turn it over to my colleagues. You know, we are sometimes really good at making plans and following them. And we're also really good at making plans and ignoring them. Some plans we make because we have to make them and some plans we have to make because we choose them. And I, I think by my count, there are at least four iterations of some kind of strategic plan floating around in EWDD. So are, are you all looking at these holistically or are we just writing strategic plans mm -hmm. in a vacuum because we have to check boxes for having them? Um, very good question. Uh, <laughs> um, the, the goal really is for, again, you know, we, we have an umbrella five-year strategic plan that we are working on, but because of different partnerships and focus areas, we knew it was important for us to drill down in, in high priority areas. Um, you know, opportunity youth is, is an area that we've been focused on for over a decade. Um, you know, and we, through strategies and different partnerships that we've built over the years, we were successful as a region in reducing the number of disconnected youth. I, again, unfortunately, since the pandemic, it, you know, a lot of the work has been re reduced. And, and so a lot of the partners, you know, the, a lot of the gang is, is back together again, right? And, and you know, we're, we are committed all to working and, and reducing that number. So we have a, a specific number that we'll commit to working as a region, and this will include not just EWDD, but LAUSD, the community college system, you know, something like five different county departments that will all commit to reducing that number. So that's a, a plan that will have a lot of teeth to it and, and we will report on, on a regular basis. Um, you know, the older worker strategy, again, and the older worker strategy is something that, you know, we will have very specific figures and, and commitments to working on and we will report back to council and, and to all of our partners. So we wanna be held accountable. We, you know, we will measure our success and, and report back out on that. Yeah. And, and we'll do the same you know, with, with the five-year strategic plan. And I think as wages are resetting in certain sectors, we're seeing an adverse impact on older workers yes. who are taking huge hits. Yes. So um, thank you for your attention on that. Did I hear, just this is not really relevant to this, but did I hear you say a million people are projected to re leave the region over the next decade? That is that a figure that, if I'm not mistaken, that was a figure that LADC reported during their oh. economic forecast. And this is across the county. It's not just within the city of LA. That's not good. It's not. And, and again, as, as a workforce system, it's something that we need to be prepared for. If we, you know, our, our employers will, will need a dedicated workforce and we need to make sure that, the, again, those that have been left out of, of the economy have, you know, have access and, and we create those opportunities, whether it's training or education, but we need to ensure that we have a workforce that's prepared. Well, I hope we're not preparing for the flight of a million workers out of the region and instead what we're preparing for is building an economy that needs and can support workers in good paying jobs. So anyway, that's it for me. Um, Mr. McCosker? Thanks very much. Um, I, just a couple questions on funding uh, to so make sure I understand the picture. I'm on table one, the 25 year annual plan. So is everything above the um, workforce investment subtotal and workforce investment discretionary, are all those as adult, dis, uh, dislocated worker, youth and rapid response, that's all workforce investment? That, that's correct. That is all WIOA dollars. And these are, and I should be clear, th these are all WIOA formula dollars. Yeah. Uh, so these are dollars that the, the, re that the, the city receives annually without having to apply for. Um, it is a, an allocation based on unemployment, uh, you know, low, uh, it, well, a number of different factors. Okay. So workforce investment dollars pretty, stays pretty constant based on the, one of the next slides. But then looking at the lines below, I can know what CDBG in California for all is. What is what, LA city programs? Is that general fund? Yes, these are all general fund dollars. And LA county programs, county funded? Yes, the, yes, there's a, a number of different county funding streams, but these, uh -huh. these typically fund our, our, uh, our higher LA or summer youth employment programs, as well as um, our, uh, our LA Rise uh, homeless programs. Is anticipated revenues just other? sort of miscellaneous? Yes, we, we, we know every year we're, we're aggressive in, in pursuing uh, grants across different uh, sources, so both at the state level and, and federal level. Uh, each year in our annual plan, we always include an anticipated uh, revenue for, for the year. And, and again, what, um, what, once we know what the final figures are, those figures are, you know, again, the budget is updated. And I think last meeting we presented our carry-in report, which has a final 
a budget allocate or you know funds received for the program year. So we, we will update it you know once once we've received all of our dollars. And our, the rapid response program that's our made famous recently with 99 cent stores. That's correct. You guys are out there rapidly responding. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. And the, all of this gets folded into the big budget. Will we see it? Will we see all this in another form as a uh, line items in your EWDT budget when we see that next week and then work on that over the next month and a half? I don't believe all of it gets wrapped into the department budget. Um, I, again, I, I have to be honest, I'm not an expert in you know, what gets in and what doesn't, but um, you know, we, we do have, we, we work on a parallel process. So we, we have an, the annual plan will include all of our funding uh, for the workforce system. Part of it in terms of department salaries and programs that are funded through the general fund do end up on the in the city budget, but you will not see you know this 111.4 million in in our budget. I see. So what we'll probably see is your basically your personnel costs and your city programs, but then there'll be a bunch. Of this some some of this is off budget. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Thanks very much. Really mm -hmm. good work. Appreciate it. Mr. Soto Martinez. Thank you, Miss yes. Madam Chair. Um, I have a few questions. And by the way, I've, I've really enjoyed reading that thick book that you gave me. Uh, it's, uh, and my apologies for the length of that. No, no, it's fine. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm learning a lot about this. Um, so you, you mentioned that, uh, it, how's the, the work source center redesign going along? Um, it sounds like it's been a little bit more challenging than, than we anticipated. Um, I, I think there's, again, because there's parallel tracks you know, we we're work, again we're working on parallel tracks that will all yeah. impact the 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 final design. The older worker will contribute to the the final redesign. Um, I, I gloss over over this, but we are working with CSUN to do an assessment of the current workforce system. So we're you know looking backwards to see how we've performed, how well we've trained people, how you know how well we've placed people into high wage jobs. So there's a kind of looking back part that we're doing. Um, and then there's a five-year strategic plan, right? So then looking forward, once we decide you know, what do we want our entire workforce system to look like, that will also impact, you know, what the, the final uh, WorkSource Center design looks like. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's pieces have kind of worked at different, you know, kind of their own time frame, and, and we had hoped to, to wrap all of this together and have those recommendations, you know, with this annual plan, but, you know, we just are not going to get there. And so the, the redesign will go into the new program year. Right. I know it was, there was talks about uh, doing an RFQ like in February and then mm -hmm. RFP, I think somewhere around this time for the, for the next fiscal year. But th th that's not going to happen. We, we did release the first phase of, of the RFQ. So we've, we opened that up and we do have proposals for those organizations that are interested in competing. Um, we, because we will not be ready with the phase two. I think we are gonna open it up for an additional 30 days just to give new organizations or additional organizations an opportunity to also compete. Um, but the second phase will not be released until we've, we have a five-year plan. You know, we've completed all of these planning processes and, and we presented a program design to, to this committee, to city council and to the workforce development board. Mm -hmm. Are we going to be able to, at the very least, have a, a like a an apprenticeship navigator at the workforce centers that can connect folks to, you know, higher LAX? You know, uh, there's so many apprent. I mean, we were in the meeting where the the painters union said, you know, we 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 struggle filling those positions. Mm -hmm. at, at the very least, will we have something where folks can connect people to those jobs? Yeah, so that's a great question. So a couple of things that we're doing in terms of apprenticeships. You know, one is, um, you know, through this LA Workforce Infrastructure Network that we're working on, you know, we, we're, we're working very closely with the LAOC Building Trades, um, Miguel Contreras Foundation, the um, LA County Fed, um, different educational partners and, and workforce partners to develop a, a strategy around infrastructure. Um, so that will, you know, definitely include, you know, all of the building trades. Um, but in terms of the, the larger five-year strategic plan, we are looking at those non-trade kind of uh, apprenticeship opportunities. So there's a number of, of non-traditional apprenticeship opportunities that we, you know, we're looking at, um, and we'll definitely have some recommendations, um, you know, again, around non-traditional apprenticeship programs. Sure. So let me, let me ask my question maybe in a, a different way. So like, 
come next this September later this year, if if someone goes to a work source centers, will someone be there ready to to send people to these kinds of apprenticeship programs? Yes, we think so. Okay, um, great. That's 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 really great. Um, the the high road for, this is for both the high road training partnership and the older workers. One of it's one point two five million. The other one's three hundred thousand. Wh where is that work going to? exist out of like uh, is it a is going to is it going to be out of the work source centers is it going to be could you just explain that a little bit more sure so so the high road training partnerships are um primarily through our work source centers i, I believe over the last year we've implemented and, and don you like seven eight 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 total um, renewable energy construction hospitality entertainment um, a lot of these are we were late getting them rolled out this current year but they're in full swing and are going to help so as we repurpose the system, we're looking at centers being high road partnerships at every center, having apprenticeship navigators, having, so all these are the themes coming out of it. So we're, you know, trying to understand based off labor, labor market data um, provided by the LADC, where the jobs are, how we connect Angelinos to these job opportunities and employers, um, offer a full comprehensive uh, menu of programming that's connected to organized labor connected to all the, the high high road um, career pathways and that is a focus I would say that's coming out of just just the wages we hear it um, in council we hear it um, at the board meetings we need to ensure we're we are creating living wages and with career opportunities with upward mobility so that is there's a lot of work that's being piloted through the current high road training partnership iteration that is going to do these work source center redesign meetings, um, set the theme and help us design a proposal to get successful, um, hopefully successful operators. Um, and that will be before you probably a year from now. So we did for full disclosure, we did request an extension to the work source center procurement for up to a year. We do not want to um, you know, preempt the redesign and the five year plan and then have to go back and pivot and amend. So we wanna make sure that we are allowing the process to play out. Um, we will, if we can complete it sooner, we will, but we, the RFQ is live, we closed it, we're gonna extend it again, we're gonna make sure we have enough proposals to vet, and then we're gonna release phase two, which will have what we're looking for, and hopefully come back with recommendations at some point. It is an intense process, appeals, we wanna make sure everything you know is done correctly, and, um, by the very latest, July of 2025 will be the brand new system. But a lot of these things, like you said, council member, the navigators, apprenticeship navigators, we're gonna pilot again with this upcoming annual plan that's before you. Yeah, no, that's out um, draft form, so we're trying to solicit more feedback and comments that we're gonna memorialize and then come back with a final plan or go to the board and then come back to this committee and then hopefully council the mayor. Yeah, hopefully. thank you. So thank you for that explanation. Uh, but I think what I heard was it'll the high road will live out of seven or eight works or centers. It sounds like that, that just it's sort of like that work is going to happen. Yes. Not as a, as a, as part of the the work or center work, but in the same space uh, with a different. Okay. That is correct. To understand. Okay. And then the older workers piece is that similar? Yeah. So so this funding in particular, I think the idea is to really help us kind of put together um, the, like the governing structure. Right, so I think we we're not at a point where we have specific program recommendations. Right. We're thinking about you know again we've spent the last nine months convening, you know the city's Department of Aging, the county's Department of Aging, our again different educational partners. Um, you know we've we've had more than a dozen partners at the table that have really helped us develop this strategy. Um, we want that to continue to live on, you know, beyond this planning process. And so we're looking at how do we establish a, right. a governance structure so this, you know, these organizations that all report to different, you know, governments, right, you know, continue to work together. Um, through that, we'll also have some specific uh, program recommendations. They're not, you know, we weren't ready to include those in the draft plan. I do think that we'll have some specific program recommendations that will be included in the, in the final plan. Sure, that sounds great, uh, which is, would explain the funding. It's not that much yes, because you're yes. sort of at an early stage. I, I would just suggest, uh, you know, talking to aging and and housing, uh, housing because the first round of ERAP money mm -hmm. was for older folks and disabled folks. And so 
if people can't pay the rent, it's probably because they don't have a good job, right? Yeah. Or on a fixed income. And so I think having that information is is going to be important. But that's just a suggestion that, that I would make. And then, sorry, I know I'm taking a long no, time. That was a great uh, suggestion, by yeah, the way. Yeah, and then, thank you, thank you. Um, and something else I've been sort of uh, thinking about quite a bit, and this is sort of to the, the loss of labor uh, in the city, we do have a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of folks showing up to uh, the, the, the family source centers uh, who are just coming to the United States for the first time. Uh, you know, I live in Little Armenia, and folks are coming with skills, but there's nobody to analyze those skills and see where you know we can connect them. Uh, many of them find jobs through friends and families, but I, I think that's going to also, unfortunately, uh, you know, for so many geopolitical reasons, including climate change and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, like we're going to continue to, to see that. Mm -hmm. And I think thinking about how we connect those folks, uh, uh, you know, to, to work, I think is going to be super important. And, and, you know, and we took a, a tour of the, of the youth source centers and seeing the disconnected youth. I think that's another like really important place to, to connect them as well. Uh, also many recent arrivals, uh, mm -hmm. you know, folks are coming in. So, just want to make that. And then my last question is, um, uh, is, are, is any of this going to, are you able to have the infrastructure in your department to be able to pay the vendors? Uh, you know, when I went to the WorkSource Center, the gentleman was like, where's my million dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I hear that so many times. I just want to make sure your your department is, you know, staffed for that. And if, if, it's, not, it's, not, if it's not a conversation for this, mm -hmm. then we can take it offline. But... Um, it's it's a major problem because folks cannot front that kind of money, yeah. right? And and it's, it's not just the work source centers, but it's a lot of different folks, a lot of vendors out there, um, you know. Cross yeah, across it, it's just really, it's it's just. I mean, anyways. So, are, are you, is this relevant to this sort of design? Or? Yeah. No, definitely. And, and and just to be frank, I mean, that is one of the biggest obstacles to the su success of our programs, right? Because yeah. we are putting a lot on our community-based organizations. You know, to front money, you know, that's taking us too long to reimburse. Um, and so they do slow down when they're out of money. And, and so that means they serve less people. Um, you know, again, the, we're, we're all anxiously waiting to see the, the final, um, you know, mayor's budget to be released. I know there are some recommendations to reduce um, our staffing and to eliminate some vacancies. Um, I know um, Carolyn has spent a lot of time meeting with different folks trying to just really explain the impact of that, of, of those recommendations. Um, I did mention, you know, one of the items on, on our presentation was imp the implementation of a new grant management system. Um, so we know that it is going to be critical that we, you know, that we do a better job of utilizing technology to help um, improve our internal processes. Um, so we are in the process and, and, um, of in implementing a grant management system that will allow us to that allow contractors to move um, the invoicing process online. So it will be a virtual process. It will allow us to better align the contract, you know, invoicing process and, and grant reporting processes. Um, so we do expect that once fully implemented, that that will help streamline the process and allow us to uh, to pay vendors, you know, more timely. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad to hear that, and I'm looking forward to the budget coming out too, because that's one of my focuses uh, for sure. Uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Again, thank you. I'll, I'll thank you for the report. I know it's we're still a lot of work to do. Uh, happy to hear uh, there was going to be some sort of navigation at the work source centers, um, especially connecting them to those jobs uh, that are very good, and we should be connecting folks to that. So, yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I just want to close by saying thank you again for the work that's gone into this and the incredibly important work that you do in workforce development. And I, I will tell you, you know, we just had a higher LAX graduation recently. I was on site at Tibbetts this morning and getting to see, I actually got to meet and speak with workers who are coming out of these programs. And it, it's frankly life changing mm -hmm. for people in so many situations and i'm really proud of the work that you're doing so i want to commend you well, thank you for, for that. that um and i don't have anything else anyone else no thank you Madam okay so um this was a discussion item so i don't think there's any action for us to take thank you for that we'll see you again soon thank is there you. anything else pending before the committee that clears the desk Madam all right this meeting's adjourned thank you